Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to your favorite weekly current affairs program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. Uh, my name is Egusa Agbonlao, and I have very distinguished uh, guest uh, this week to actually dissect the national issue that we have for discussion uh, today. Uh, we are looking at something from uh, the southeast zone of Nigeria, the political situation there, because it has an effect on the entire democratic uh, uh, setting in the country. I'm talking about uh, the sack of a Boeing state governor, uh, Governor Mai, uh, by the court, and uh, his appeal, and of course, the reasons behind the sack by the court, and uh, what is also happening among uh, political office holders in the country in terms of defection from one party to the other. Uh, some persons have said before now that there's nothing wrong in defection, uh, but we've seen now that there is a different phase to the scenario with what the court has done. Uh, let me quickly introduce my guest. I have with us today a very seasoned uh, uh, analyst, a clergyman of repute, Archbishop Fred Agedo. Uh, nice to have you on the program today. Thank you very much. God yes. He also knows the political terrain very well, and uh, he will be uh, giving us his own thought. We also have with us a uh, former governorship candidate in Edo State. Uh, twice he's been governorship candidate. Uh, Bishop Akalame. Nice to have you Thank with you us today. Thank you very much. I understand he's now Dr. Bishop Akalame. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, also have with us uh, a very renowned uh, legal luminary, and of course, uh, a man that uh, knows the political setting in this country. He's also a politician uh, and a clergyman as well. Uh, Pastor Barrister Jim Osagede. Nice to have you with us today. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So that's the setting. But before my guests will make their comments, um, the sack of a Boeing state governor by the court has generated reactions. Lawyers are talking. So let's just listen to two lawyers who made comments right in the court after the verdict, and they will take it from there. Let's just listen to them. that this type of judgment can come up. The Supreme Court has ruled and said there is no provision against the defection of the president, vice president, governor, or deputy governor. So, is the court making a, a judgment different from that of the Supreme Court? It is obvious. All the issues we raised we are capital. This is a clear case of travesty of justice. Is the, chin. the state high court had made a pronouncement on this matter, saying that the constitution has no provision for defection, or has not made it a, a, an offense for a governor to defect from a party to the other. And I'm surprised that the federal high court here did not cite any provision of the constitution. Okay, that's Governor Mai. Uh, governor Mai, uh, a Boeing State Governor, uh, is the man right now in the news. Yes, that's the man. He's the man in the news. He also addressed the press conference. Uh, he also allowed Nigerians to know his own side of the story. But the present situation is that he has appealed, and we are waiting for that. But we are going to dissect the issue. Um, governor Dave Umai defected to the APC on November the 19th, 2020. That was when he defected. And he was elected governor of Ebony State on the platform of the PDP. And I must tell you that his associates at that time were holding very key positions. But my guests will analyze. Um, we are going to start with uh, a legal luminary with us on today's program. Now, 
Um, I've listened to Falana SCN, who also made his point. And uh, to Falana, he expected Umayyad to have vacated his position. You know? But that's Falana's uh, take on it, his view. And you heard the other lawyers. Now, looking at this scenario, what's your take? Well, first of all, let me congratulate ITV for... Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. When, whenever there's a, a matter to be adjudicated in the court, yes. there are always uh, two sides. Okay. And uh, the judge is uh, an impartial arbiter. Okay. The court is made up of two parts. Okay. You have the law and you have equity. Mm. So it's equity and law okay. that makes up the, the court. Okay. Now, is the equity that directly impacts on the inherent jurisdiction of the court, okay. of which the, the judge is a custodian. Okay. And then, you know, a lot of comments have been made about uh, the sacking of uh, Devo Mai. Devo Mai, the government <clears throat> of uh, a boy state. You know, the, the fact remains that when you read the Constitution, you don't pick and choose the one that suits you. Every aspect of the Constitution must be read in concert. So when you start from Section 1 to the last page of the Constitution, yes. you must marry them together. Okay. For instance, you talk about a home, you can't talk of father alone. Okay. Father, mother, children, if they are children. Okay. So the, the reference to the fact that the Constitution does not make provision for uh, what happens if the, the president, the vice president, the governor, the deputy governor, the first or another party, does not mean that those elected officials cannot run foul of some other sections of the constitution. Okay. I'll give you an example. Yes. Now, uh, the, the section of the constitution 109, okay. that section makes a provision for how somebody can lose the seat in House of Assembly, for, for example. Okay. And the Constitution recognizes the fact that it is not the candidate himself, because we don't have independent candidacy in Nigeria. Okay. The, the electorate votes for uh, the party, and you as a candidate, you are simply an agent of your principal. Okay. And that your principal is, 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 a, is a party you are presenting. Okay. For example, Mr. A is a candidate of PDP or APC. Okay. Now, when, when the election results are declared, and the party that Mr. A, you know, uh, represents as an agent yes. is declared the winner, then you can now assume the toga of that party yes. to move into the office for which that election was conducted. So if you are elected under the platform of, of uh, PDP, for instance, mm. That election was made possible by your party, not by yourself as a candidate. So it is expected that as you are in that office, you are carrying out the manifesto, the, the wishes and aspirations of the constitution of PDP, on that, uh, 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 you know, on whose platform you became the governor. Yes. So look at the scenario. Now you, you were elected under PDP. You decided on your own to move to another party. Mm. Now, you are still carrying the certificate of return that say that, say that you, David Umwahi, mm. have been elected as governor of Ebony State under the platform of People PDP. Now, that certificate of returns is now invalid because you are now in a place where that certificate cannot be tendered. Are you going to amend the certificate of returns and say now under APC? So, you know, it, it doesn't work. Now, the section I referred to, one night says that one of the ways or one of the permissible uh, instances where you can move from one party to another is mm. if there's a division in your party. And the court has, has ruled in the past that the division itself is not restricted to, to your state. Okay. If the division is not affecting the national uh, 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 part of your party. Okay you cannot cry of a division. Okay. In the case of Umwahi, there was no division whatsoever in the uh, PDP. The statement that he made that, you know, the Southeast have been marginalized, 
does not meet the, the definition of division in the Constitution. Okay. So it was acting on its own. Like we say in law, it was on the frolic of its own. Okay. So when you are on the frolic of, its, of your own, yes. you are worse than somebody who is sitting on the fence because you receive bullet from outside. Hmm. So the hue and cry, you know, that uh, the judge did not... You see, before you become a judge, you yeah. must be the sound in mind, in character, and in learning. Okay. So the equity aspect of the law that I talk about, yes. which gives the, the judge the inherent power, that is, there are some powers in the judge mm. that will not allow him to tolerate lacuna in the Constitution. Okay. I'll give you an example. Uh, in the last century, there was a judge in England, he, he, you know, uh, uh, I remember his name now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lord Denny. Okay. Lord Denny, you know, is, uh, is, is a critical study for law students in the law school. Even, even scholars still study him. Okay. Lord Denny specialized in breaching lacuna in the rules and regulation of England. You know, they don't have a, a written constitution. Yes, they have one written. Yeah, so when there's an issue, uh, when an issue comes up in England and there's no constitutional provision, he invokes equity to make sure that the people do not suffer because of the fact that you want to hide on the, on the, uh, uh, under the umbrella that there is no provision in the Constitution. So those are the things that judges are meant to, uh, to look into. That is why, you know, uh, uh, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a maxim in law, we say, ubi juice, ubi remedio. Okay. Once there is a wrong, there is a remedy. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So for Umwahi, there's no division in your party, okay. you just left. Okay. Are you now, you know, carrying out the manifesto of PDP in APC? Okay. It's practically impossible. If, uh, it, when it was PDP, that election in, in the uh, 2019, mm. the, the PDP scored more than 300,000 votes. Now, those are 300,000 different wishes by 300,000 uh, uh, electorate who had the cause of, to vote for PDP because they believe in the manifesto and the ideas of PDP. Mm. Now, are you going to disenfranchise the wishes of those people and just move? You see, what, what we have in that judgment is I don't want to talk about what will happen in our people, but I want to be subsidized. We are talking about the decision of the, uh, of the High Court. The judge has set a tone for morality, for law and order in Nigeria politics. Hmm. So that by the time, you know, next time you are elected and now you have <laughs> problem with your people, you just want to move like that, yes. you will take twice. Yeah, we've so come to that. Sure. We've come to that, uh, Marisa, because you know, you've said it all. Uh, and I believe that my viewer, you've been able to understand the background now in terms of the legal uh, jargons involved in this matter. Uh, but we have a politician, somebody who has contested for the position of governor before. And uh, he's used to all these kind of things. Uh, uh, Dr. Bishop Bakalame. Yes. Now, what's your take on this scenario? Thank you. Yes. You see, uh, I think a time has come in Nigeria yes. where we have to uh, work on what is called um, politics with morality. I think that is what is lacking in Nigeria politics. Okay. We jettison morals in, in our politics. Mm. And if you look at what happened in the case of Umahi, this is not the first time. It's not strange. It has happened before in different states. And I can tell you how such issues have been handled. If you check very well, INEC does not deal with individuals. A 2024 governorship election is still very far away. If Agbolao pre out posters right now, support Agbolao for governor 2024. If you like, go and paste them in INEC office. Even when the rec and all the staff look at the posters and there is no party in your poster, they will just laugh and enter their offices. Nobody will contact you because INEC does not deal with political parties. It is no, one deal with individuals. individuals. Yeah. It is one there is a political party in your poster. Okay. You say, ah, election, 2024 election is still very far in the Edo State. How come they should allow Agbolao to bring up posters? So they will not contact you. They will contact that party and sanction that party. You see? So I next deal with what? Individuals. Hmm. Uh, political, political parties yeah, instead of individuals. Yeah. That is why when you go to the field to vote, like in the 2020 goodbye election, hmm. if you say you love Bishop Akalami, you want to vote for me. If they give you the ballot paper, you will not see Bishop Kalaman on the ballot paper. Okay. What do we ask you is your party? To, before the election, you must have asked which party is projecting as possibly Bishop Kalaman. Say, oh, Zeni Labour Party. So when they give you the ballot paper, what we see on it are various political parties participating in the election. So if you want to vote for me, you have to look for my party, which is the Zeni Labour Party, and put your ink there. You must have voted for my party. That means you voted for Bishop Kalaman because INEC does not deal with what individuals. Okay. Now, 
the election, if I score 200,000 votes, yes. those votes does not belong to Bishop Akalame. Those votes belong to my party, the Zene Labour Party, that sponsored me in the election. i give you an example. But and you were the one that campaigned. Let me tell you something. Yes. I, I see, That's an agent. You see, I, I, am, I am an agent. The party projected me. Okay. Okay? You get what Yes. So, the people, the electorates, if they are casting vote for me, they are not casting vote for Bishop Akalame, but they are casting that vote on my party projecting me. So, the, party, the, the, the vote belongs to my party, not me. You see that now? Yes. Now, I give you an example. I give you an instance. Governorship election was conducted in Kogi State. The APC conducted their primary election. Yeah. The Prince Aldo, blessed memory, yes. won that primary. That's correct. Then Governor Yaya Bello mm. came second. As a doctor, was not Governor Yaya Bello. It, it, it was just it, Yaya Bello. Yaya Bello. Yes. He came second in mm. the primary election. Yes. Election conducted. Election was still going on. County was still going on. Then the man who actually won the election died. Then we were thinking, a lot of people were thinking that another election more would not be. I, I, I may have to announce a date for another election. But that didn't happen. The I, I, I next told the party that the vote belongs to APC. Hmm. Now, have this vote. Project another candidate that we have that will take over. Hmm. Because the vote belongs to the party, not the mother died. Hmm. That was why Yabelo, who was the, who took second in the prior election, became the governor of Kogi State. And hmm. of course, he now became a, a, a child of a circumstance. It has happened. So, I want to advise Omahe and the Joshua. I know, ego, pride, greed, most times push us to do the unnecessary. And that is what I see that Governor Umahi is doing right now. And then I tell you that that motivation we do do along the line. It's just a kind of motivation. Ego, ah, I will not accept defeat. It is very clear that in that election, organized, conducted by INEC in a Bonnie state, won by PDP, the PDP, with more than 300,000 votes, the, the, the APC got about 81,000 votes in that election. Now, the INEC declared you a winner, okay? Under the platform of the PDP, and certificate of return was issued to you under the platform of the PDP, now you are now leaving the party. You see, if you look at the session of the Constitution very well, I was trying to look at section 68 and section 122. Okay. I look at that, even though some people have said there were no provisions in the Constitution, which has stopped the governor and the deputy governor uh, not to defect. And you see, I think we have to bring morality into what we discuss. If the 68 is stopping lawmakers, that if you are serving, you are under, you are what you've already won an election under the platform you are moving. That's the that you cannot move with the party, the party vote to another party. You have to resign. Then if you go to that uh, session of one to two, you see the the, the there must be consequences for merchandising the people's vote yeah. for another political party. There are consequences. If there are no consequences, all these things will trigger corruption. In Nigeria, because why do people do, 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 why do people tell people why do people defect to other political parties? Why, they, why, why you have already got to the mandate of your political party? Maybe you have done one or two things, one or two things that you don't want the the the, 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 the governor, the government, and the power uh, at the world, the center to, to see. So you want to join them. So that their sins will be forgiven. Yes, so your sins will be forgiven. <laughs> so a time has come. Yes, and like I tell you, if market is not if case not taking, now you have, even though you mobilized about fifty cents. It's unnecessary. Because if you go to the appeal, you will still lose that case. No, you can't uh, no, preempt. Let, let, let me tell you something. You can't preempt it. No, I am, no. Mm. These, are, these are my words. Yes. Even so many lawyers have, even, even Chief Michael Zekome has also given his own perception about this case. Is it not? Yeah. Even the other side. That the, that, the personal view that even the case, the venue that came out, was out of place. He criticized the judgment. Thanks for all position. So I mean, I'm talking right now. Yes. On, on, on the ground of morality. That's the vote, the vote, he metadized what belonged to the PDP. It was, it was, it was a call for. He doesn't want me to waste money. Because even though he get, and, and, and what I'm even praying for is that if he get to the Supreme, so they will not even ask him to afford all the salary that, that he was paid since he became the governor under the prior, or, since the time he defected. It can happen. Because if he pursued this guy from that to Supreme, the Supreme Court may even ask him that the day that November you defected from the salary you were, you were paid from November till now, please refer them. That would be another problem. So it's better he told the line of honor and resign. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong in defeating. 
You can defend when you're not holding a position. When you're not holding, when you're not, when you're not holding a position, elective, elective position. position, don't defend. No problem. But you are you are holding a position with the with, with the votes of your political party. If you are going, what do you do? You say, I want to defect. Please, take your vote. I'm no longer governor. Look for somebody to replace me, and I'm going to another party. Okay. You cannot defect and become a party. Okay. If you are playing for Nigeria now, you are wearing a jersey number nine. You say, you want to play for Nigeria, team, you are going to Ghana. Are you going to take the Nigeria jersey to Ghana to play for them? Okay. That's food for thought. That's food for thought for my viewer. Uh, but we'll get back to you, uh, uh, Bishop Akalame. Uh, just I'll quickly have to make this point that uh, Dave Umayi, of a boy state cannot resign now. He's been sacked by the court, uh, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's, uh, he has appealed. But let's get the talk of Archbishop Fred Agedo, who has mingled with politicians too, and he's also a clergyman. Uh, okay, a quick one before we take this uh, break. Thank a quick one. Very, thank you very much. Yes. I uh, thank God for the lawyer and uh, the politicians in our midst. You okay. Know, whatever I want to say, I will tell you, I want to look at it with the light of the gospel yes with the light of god yes you see i think uh, the judiciary are waking up okay to what is expected of them yes by common mind the street because to set up a government i understand that uh, there are three organs of government yes the judiciary the legislators and the executive mm. so i think time it will get to time when all the various departments will play their role the way it ought to be. Check and balances. Yes, check and balances will come up. For now, I think the judiciary is waking up to something. Because we as a layman, we as a pastor on the pulpit, yes. we have seen a situation where judiciary will pronounce a word. An elected executive with an immunity begin to cast insult on the judiciary. It happens in Bayasa. Nothing happened. To understand that the judge who pronounced the word in the Supreme Court was attacked. It's not a hidden thing. So anytime judgment does not favor certain persons who are in positions of authority, they begin to cast as action. Mm. So I think something needs to get right on this elective position. Yeah. Because nobody will know a rose <laughs> if ITV is not in existence. Yes, I'm grateful to ITV so for giving me the platform. To ITV. That's yes, why okay. The Silver Jubilee and the ITV. Shifts, yes. So we thank God for that. So you are under the auspices of ITV. Yes. So and everybody is seeing you on the telecast today because of ITV. Now if we now say ITV is not important, is Agbola going to build <laughs> uh, his personal <laughs> television house? Yes. So Akalame is 105 percent correct the barrister has added other law yeah. from the angle of the godly mind the uh, looking at it with the light yes. of the gospel yes i see the judiciary waking up to now draw everybody's attention because only a man that has no head will just see a house and pack him and you don't mind who built the house or the house just germinate from the ground even if it germinate from ground is the is God somebody created this earth? But the yeah. scientists say no. The world just came into existence. It's only a man that does not receive. Okay, Archbishop, we are going to get back to you, but we'll quickly take this break. Okay, it's always a delight to have you back, and we're always delighted to know that you're spending. Uh, part of your 60 minutes with us, or uh, your complete 60 minutes with us on the program, 60 Minutes Nigeria, uh, our current affairs program where we dissect national issues. My name is Yago Sagbon Lao, and I have with me very distinguished personalities, I must tell you. Uh, a barrister Jim Osagede has made his opening remarks on this issue of the sack of a Boeing state governor, and he's been able to explain that some matters may not be captured by the Constitution, but the judiciary knows the right way to handle such cases. And that's exactly what is happening in the case of a Boeing State Governor. And his deputy, it was not only Devumai. Devumai and his deputy both were sacked by the court for defecting to the ruling APC party having been elected on the platform of PDP. 
that's that's the topic. So we we'll get back to the barrister. Now this has happened. Uh, he has appealed. Some persons are saying that oh, he should have obeyed the court. The PDP in Eboi, they have addressed the press. They've been making their demand. In short, sure they've even criticized INEC of delay in implementation of the court sack court order. That the, the, man, the governor, that is the woman, should have left. Do you think he should have left, or this appeal was the right thing to have done from the legal perspective, Barrister Jim? Well, the, the judgment gave uh, two options to, uh, to his decision. Okay. The first one was that PDP should substitute yes. Umahi and his deputy yes. with new persons. Yes. And then he also, or that is in the alternative, the INEC should conduct election within 90 days. Okay. Now, being that as it may, when there is a judgment at uh, the high court level, there is uh, a window for appeal. Okay. And, you know, when you file your notice of appeal, you approach the court for what is referred to as stay of mm. execution. So you are telling the court to, to please allow you to remain in that position until this matter is resolved at the court of appeal. That is the reason why the Bumahi is still the governor today. You know, the, the fact is that when you go to court and you lose, if you are not satisfied, you know, we are, we are not, uh, uh, you know, it's not every time that you are serving the of the court. Yes. If you are not satisfied, then you go higher on, on the ladder of justice. Mm. You want to appeal to the court of appeal. If you are, if you are not satisfied, then, then you go to the Supreme Court. See, I don't really want to talk about, uh, you know, what will happen at the court of appeal or the Supreme Court because those learned justices, they will look at the merit of the matter. But I, I, I just want to make a point, you know, uh, that uh, the Umahi lawyers and Umahi himself is saying, and many people are saying that Section 308 of the Constitution gives or grants immunity to the President, the Vice, the Deputy, the Governor, and the Deputy. Mm. Now, Section 308, giving you immunity, does not exempt you from the, uh, from the Electoral Acts, which does not have you know, provision for independent candidacy. Yes. Electoral which says that we don't have independent candidate that you must run under the umbrella of a political party. Just like Bishop said, that is why it is only your political party emblem that you see on the ballot box. It is your political party that is announced. They will say uh, so, so, so and so has won the election under the auspices of PDP or APC as the case may be. So you cannot hide under the immunity clause and commit such heinous, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, offense. Let me put yeah. it down. I don't yes. want to call it yes. uh, uh, criminal or whatever, because that will offend Section 308. Okay. You, you understand? Yes. So if Section 308 gives you immunity, that you cannot be prosecuted for criminal or civil, even though Ghani Farami tested that during the time of, uh, uh, I think it was a Latif uh, Jaconde, mm. that, you know, the court even ruled that the governor can be investigated while he's in office. But you cannot prosecute it. So you don't wait for when you step out of the of the office. So you cannot leave PDP with PDP mandates and expect to remain governor under APC while you are carrying PDP mandate. Okay. Now what the court has done is that you know he who comes to equity, I told you that the court is made up of law and equity. Yes. It's called with clean hands. Yes. You know, and equity regards as done that which ought to be done. Yes. So equity in this case regards Umahi as having resigned from his position as governor, which he ought to have done mm. when he left APC. Okay. So the law, you know, the tentacles of the law are, you know, they are such that if you want to hide the other one uh, uh, aspect of the law, the other one is, is, is like Nemesis will catch up with you. Yes. You know, that is exactly what the judge is. So this kind of judge is the type of judge we, we refer to as an activist judge. Okay. The judge that looks at the pros and cons and reach a just decision for the common man, for the good of the society. Okay, thank you, uh, Barrister. And uh, now let's get the thought of a politician now. This question, I believe, have you would like it. Um, Dr. Akalame, now, as a politician, why do politicians defect? Is it that our politicians do not understand the ideologies of party, or is it that political parties in Nigeria do not have ideologies? Why do politicians defect? Thank you. Okay. You see, the Nigeria system yes. is what are giving room to what I call fair weather politicians. Okay. They do that 
for their own personal benefits. A politician will like to move from one particular party to another when what he's looking for is not in that party. Take for instance, I am in the Labour Party. Okay. I have the intention of contesting for governorship on that platform. And I have consulted so many leaders in the party, I discovered that there is no chance for me. The chance is very slim. Yeah. Because of my personal ambition, I would not decide to move from that party where I feel I will be welcome, be will be favored, and run. So not based on ideology? No. Personal interest. Okay. Personal interest. That is number one. Number two, some politicians, yes. especially those who are in power, what they have committed one or two things that have to do with corruption, they just feel that if I say remain, especially when the party is in opposition. opposition, they want to join the party in the center. That if I go there, they may not use the SEC to investigate me anymore. Yes. So there's need for me to join them. If I join that, become, we become one family. Mm. I will not be intimidated. I will not be victimized. I will not be harassed. So let me just go there and relax. Okay. So you now see a politician who is already a governor or a senator or a House of Rep member defecting to another party. You see the reason now? Then another one is this. When, a, when there are crises in the party, maybe there's division in the party. You know, there are some politicians, they, like, they love peace. So when they're in the party, where there are division here and there, they, there's need for them to move to a more peaceful uh, a party. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So these are some of the reasons why those politicians move from one political party to uh, from one political party to another. Okay. Then I have always I have always covered that there is need for the constitution to be amended. To be amended. Yeah, because yeah. I was just coming because, to that. Because things have changed. Yeah, because the, the, like you said, the, the constitution is silent on the issue of yeah, governor yeah, yeah. and deputy governor defecting. Good. But the lawmakers, the constitution is so clear. Yeah. That once they defect, yes. then they are affected. Yes. And the case of uh, Boeing, the legislators were also sacked. They sacked. But yes. And nobody's talking about that no. because the constitution captured that. Good. In 2018, uh, the governors of Benue, Sokoto, and Kwara also did similar thing. There was defection, but the constitution is silent on that defection. But, yeah, but, I, I know Barista will want to talk about that. The judge yes. has already filled the gap. Okay. You know, one of the, let me just give you uh, a point. You know, yes. One of the reasons yes. why Umayi lost that case. Okay. You know, where you go to court, you want to, one of the reasons why he lost the case. Yes. Was that he was making a heavy weather of Session 308. Okay. That he has immunity. He, he ought not to be brought to court, this and that. You know, okay. That even a high court in the Boy State has already ruled that you cannot prosecute a governor. You know, it, it's, it's not the usual prosecution. In Federal High Court Civil Procedure Rule 2019, yes. there is what you call demora. Demora has been abolished. Demora is if you are taken to court and you don't file a defense, yes. you are only trying to challenge you know, the, uh, the suit in court without filing a defense, it's called demora. It has been established. Let me explain further. Like, if, if I sue you and I say you have done this, you have done that, you will reply in your defense. I did not do this, A, B, C, D, I did not do After you have replied, then you now come up with the reason mm. why that matter ought to have come at all. Umahi and his team, with due respect to them, they were dwelling, making heavy weather of Session 308 that the governor and the deputy cannot be prosecuted because of immunity okay. without even defending you know, okay. the matter. Okay. But uh, before I allow uh, Dr. Akalame to comment further, um, some persons believe that this doctor, this um, Dave Umahi's case, ought to be a constitutional matter, not within the jurisdiction of the High Court. Is that correct? No, it's a, it's a constitutional matter. The High Court has jurisdiction. OK. Where else are you going to take it to? Is High Court that you take it to, if you are not satisfied before you start going up. It's, it's a constitutional matter. OK, thank you for that. Yeah. Now, Bishop Akalemi, you were really expatiating on why politicians defend. Now, you've made a point. Self oh, oh, sorry, sir. You, maybe okay. you, uh, you wanted to say that it's a tribunal. Uh, it's not. It's, uh, it's a post-election, everything. Is now is purely the, what the position says. That, okay. You know, Thank you for that yeah. uh, uh, observation. Um, now, 
politicians elected, you want to be governor. That's your interest. You won on the platform of a particular party. Why defect again? Don't you think there may be some intrigues? There could be some very strong reasons why elected politicians defect. You want to tell us that because you know about it. That is why. That is why. That is why. That is why I was. I was talking to you about what I call political cover. Okay. Because in as far as I am concerned, I see no reason why you will be a governor or a, a platform, a political party, yeah. and you want to go to another party. That's what I told when, a, when, a, when a, a politician is looking for political cover, when a, political party, when, a political, when a leader is looking at future ambition, okay. exactly. you get what I'm saying? Okay. When he's looking for future ambition. Okay. If you look at it very clearly, the David Umayu case here, he himself wanted to become, he wanted to become president of this country. Are you not aware? He wanted to become president of this country. So he wanted to use the platform of the APC to contest. Because he knew that the APC was zoning to this, uh, to this, uh, to this, to this out. So he now feel that if I remain in PDP, the last of Atiku and the rest will not allow me <laughs> to get the ticket. And I think, I'm telling you how, the, how politicians think. Yes. So I think if I move now, a year before the election, a year before the election, if yes. I move now, I may have an opportunity to what? To, to contest other APC. Okay. And as we speak right now, at the moment he did it, the court case, he's not even talking about presidential election again. Okay. Now he's thinking of survivor. How to, how to survivor. That's why I told you, and I said, if you waste the court time, now you have, you have, got, you have got the state of execution. You are still there as governor. No problem. It, the court judgment will come again. You move again to Supreme. Execution. You are still there as governor. The court may say you are wasting our time. So all the salaries you have enjoyed, <laughs> they turn it to a Thank you. The 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 <laughs> Bishop. Now, yeah, you have seen politicians. You've, you've, you've met with them. Sometimes I attempted to say, you know what's going on in their mind as a prophet, you know. Now, why do politicians, why are they not, you know, faithful to those who voted them? Why are they not uh, reliable? Most politicians are not reliable. Rather, once they are voted into power, they forget about who voted for them. They just think about, why do politicians behave like that? OK. Yes. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. I think ITV is doing what they are doing because of the competent and dedicated staffs they have. Oh, thank you for today. that. Thank you. And that's why you are celebrating. Yes. So when you have a psychophant in positions of authority, Yes. These are what happens. Please allow me to speak the mind of God mm. on this issue. Okay. And that makes me to say, in order for the election in the state, in our nation, we are telling the church, get involved. Get involved in politics. Our Christian association does not allow that because you ought not to be a partisan politician. But we are not saying church, Christian community, get involved immediately. Because when you send an unbeliever message, he will not bring a message of a believer. When you send devil message, he will not bring you good news. So we want to put in place right now people that fear God, people that have the heart of God, people that have the... Is it only in the church that you have people that fear God? Yes. Yes, that's where I belong. That's what I know. Because if my father start killing chicken and goat every day, I will grow to start killing human beings. Because blood is no longer a thing that frightens me. So you don't expect me to speak for those now. Okay. If you want those who will speak for those who are not Christian, bring them to this program. <laughs> okay. okay, go ahead. Go so, ahead, Bishop. So Please go ahead. Yes, speak for your, okay. Christians, get involved in yes. politics. Don't let somebody tell you, vote, and you are not, you are not to be voted for. If a reverend father becomes a, 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 a governor of a state, he won't do this. Because leaving the Catholic mission and say you are going to Agrican, your, 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 what do you call it? Your, 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 your uh, parishioners, or, they won't take it lightly with you. So politics is in our nation, it's in our blood. We need not to talk on our lips while our heart is far from mm -hmm. what our lips are saying. That is the psychophancy we see in politics of today. Because they look at what you are asking the politician and the lawyer. We were here in our nation here, to my little knowledge. Yes. I knew what happened in Zamfara. 
I knew what happened in Zamfara. That made PDP to take over from Zamfara. Because APC was not in the ballot paper. Is that not true? Or is that not the state? Yeah. You know what happened in Bayasa? You know what happened in Bayasa? These things never teach the politicians uh, any lesson. Because when they get to that position of immunity, you cannot be persecuted. That's what the lawyer had just said. Yes. That somebody was not dealing on that. And there are nobody supposed to take me to court. See what it has caused. So <laughs> I would want to advise to my yes. with the mind of God, with the voice as a prophet, it should honorably resign and not go further. Because <laughs> no court, and, and this is my personal yes. uh, submission, no court, even Supreme Court, that we judge in his favor. They will only judge in the favor of the political because the political party they are the plenty. But we are going to wait because exactly. this case, this case will surely get to the Supreme Court. If he gets, so we are going to wait. Because he will return all his salary. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. gentlemen, I want to thank you. But before we leave, the governor of Edo State, uh, Governor Gordon Obaseki, recently said he will remain in PDP despite yeah. the troubles. That's a man that fear God. Okay. He knows where he's going. So, so that's a good one. That's my and, and again, because time is not always on our side, we have to really comment on this. The governor, a new governor, has been sworn in in Anabra State, mm. a former CBN governor, Soludo. Professor Soludo. Um, today, he took the oath of office. So a quick one, Barrister. And he said low-key. It was low-key ceremony in government house. And from what we are told, you will start working today. So don't you think that's a good example? That's yeah, a good way to start. He, he has, a quick uh, one. Uh, 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 Professor Soludo has a good pedigree. Okay. He's a man that is very intelligent. At the age of 33, he became a professor. He's, uh, he's a record type. And uh, as a governor of Central Bank, he brought some innovations where he wiped out some uh, insolvent banks that were capitali uh, capitalizing on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the money of... Uh, or of poor people for okay. without uh, personal interest, okay. he sanitized the system, and uh, since he became uh, governor elect before today he became the governor, he has been speaking uh, low key. He has not responded to those attacking him. You know, as a professor, we expect that he will make a difference. Okay, and I wish him well. Thank you, uh, Bishop Akalame. Uh, the new governor of Anambra State started his inauguration on a low key, and I can tell you that yes. the, the Anambra State is blessed. The time has come for us to lead governors with professionals. It's tested. You know what he is? He's a man with high mental capacity. Okay. He tick out of the box. Yes. You know when he was a governor of Central Bank, you saw the reform, all everything he brought on board yeah. that make all our banks functional. And I believe that he will replicate that in a... But that in a issue market. of politicians seeing politics as a profession and gaining from uh, the governor, do you think the, the politicians will be able to make money from uh, Charles Sonudu? Why you? Why you? Why you? Why you, why you the, 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 issue, the issue is that go, government, I mean, politics is not all about. It's not a business venture, mm -hmm. and now it's, it's becoming or becoming that many people are now seeing it as business ventures. People will travel abroad, Canada, stay 20 years. When they come back to Nigeria, they will be asking, "What kind of business would I put my money?" And say, "Go into politics." Without idea, without templates. That's why we are suffering today. Thank you, uh, Archbishop. A quick one, Charles Sonudu. Governor of Anambra State. Are you surprised uh, with this low key? No, no, not much is spent. Like I was yes. saying, this is not the first time he's been a governor. Yes. He has been a governor of Central Bank, which means he has controlled the whole federation. Mm. And the money of our nation was in his palm. Okay. And he was very, very prudent okay. in doing things he was doing. So yeah. we expect the best from uh, Anambra. Thank you very much. Uh, my guest, thank you. My viewer, thank you. That's the program for this week, 60 Minutes Nigeria. If you enjoyed the program, next week we'll be looking at another topic. Until then, do have a wonderful weekend ahead. Bye-bye.